Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at a green-white teleportation circle deck. The 4-mana enchantment introduced in Forgotten Realms says at the beginning of your end step exile up to one target artifact or creature you control and then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So we can essentially flicker one of our artifacts or creatures which is great with any beneficial enter the battlefield abilities so our deck is filled to the brim with artifacts and creatures with positive ETB effects. And the one that synergizes the best with Teleportation Circle is probably Asika's Chariot, the 4-mana legendary artifact vehicle. It's a 4-4 with a crew cost of 4, and when a chariot enters a battlefield we get to make a pair of 2-2 green cat creature tokens, and when the chariot attacks we get to make a token that's a copy of target token we control, so we can make additional cat tokens or maybe additional treasures from our innkeeper. Then we also have the full playset of Spirit of the Elder Guard, has 4 toughness and power equal to the number of other snow permanents we control, and when the Spirit of the Elder Guard enters the battlefield, we can search our library for a snow land card, reveal it and put it into our hand. And Spirit of the Elder Guard is a great combo with Faceless Haven, which is an extra threat we get to search up, it's a snow land, and that's also the reason why our mana base consists only of snow lands with 9 snow-covered plains, 7 snow-covered forests, and 4 of the green-white dual land that comes into play tapped, that's also a snow land, and those will all boost up the Spirit of the Elder Guard's power, as well as the 4 copies of Sculptor of Winter, another snow creature that can tap to untap target snow land, so it can essentially help us ramp, and since since we do want to get to 4 mana as quickly as possible, it's very useful to have some 2 mana acceleration, which is why we have the full playset of Sculptor of Winter, as well as the full playset of Prosperous Innkeeper, the 2 mana 1-1 one, one, that when it enters a battlefield creates a treasure token, and whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, we gain 1 life, so another great combo with flickering our Isika's Chariot and making a whole bunch of cat tokens. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we also have the full playset of Portable Hole, a 1 mana artifact removal spell that when it enters a battlefield exiles target a non-land permanent an opponent controls with mana value 2 or less until Portable Hole leaves the battlefield. So this is a great answer for opposing creature tokens which we can exile without any repercussions as they won't be coming back if the Portable Hole leaves the battlefield. And then it's also great to flicker Portable Hole with Teleportation Circle, especially if we're exiling opposing tokens, or we can potentially switch targets if the opponent presents a 2 mana permanent or 1 mana permanent that is more threatening than whatever we exiled previously. Then at 2 mana, besides our Innkeeper and Sculptor, we also have the full playset of Professor of Symbology, a 2 mana 2 one that when it enters the battlefield lets us learn, which is why we have this 7 card sideboard in Best of One, full of lessons we can learn for. So we've got Academic Probation to prevent attacks or blocks, or prevent the opponent from casting any devastating spells, Environmental Sciences to help hit or land drops, Reduce to Memory as a removal spell, We've got Basic Conjuration to find extra creatures, great for finding our Spirit of the Elder Guard for instance, We've got Containment Breach to answer artifacts or enchantments, Expanded Anatomy to give our creature 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters and Vigilance until end of turn, and then a Mascot Exhibition as a nice curve topper making 3 different creature tokens. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Skyclave Apparition as a nice creature removal spell, exiling an opposing permanent with mana value 4 or less, and then when the Apparition leaves the battlefield the opponent gets an Illusion token equal to the exiled permanent's mana cost instead. So also something we can potentially flicker with Teleportation Circle, even if the opponent does potentially get a bunch of Illusions in the process. And then the full playset of Elite Spellbinder, the 3-1 Flyer, that when it enters the battlefield we can look at the opponent's hand and then exile a non-land card from it, and the opponent will have to pay 2 additional mana to cast that card from exile, so another great one to flicker with our circle. And then we've already covered the mana base and our 4 drops, so that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our mana is not perfect, but we can learn for environmental sciences and then we're off to the races. So we'll try it. Opponent with turn to innkeeper in a blank green deck. And I think I'm okay trading for Innkeeper in general. A 
next turn probably go for chariots. And sort of put in place another innkeeper. So maybe a giant treasure deck. Could have a look with Spellbinder, but... Hmm, it is tempting if we can delay a Goldspan Dragon by a turn. That's a pretty big deal. So maybe I go Innkeeper into Spellbinder then. And next turn the Chariot's gonna gain me some life. Alright, no Goldspan Dragons, but plenty of other Dragons to choose from. Crackle with power as well. I think we have to pick the Inferno here. Which they could have played next turn. Ooh, nice teleportation circle. So yeah, I think it's time for chariots. And then... Could trade Spellbinder for Innkeeper, basically. It doesn't seem worth it. This will give me a bunch of life. And next turn we can get our value engine going. Predator attacks, exiles our professor and hits us for four. And another predator to play. Alright, so we can go Sculptor plus Teleportation Circle. And then... Probably don't want to attack with a Chariot, do we? Opponent can still grow the Predator by sacking the Innkeeper. So yeah, we'll just go Sculptor plus Circle. And then we'll have to try and go wide enough to overwhelm the opponent. So might see the Inferno play it this turn. Nope, opponents hanging on to their treasure. They might be setting up a big crackle with power, in which case I might want to flicker the Spellbinder to make that too more expensive. So your opponent's almost out of cards in Graveyard to Exile to grow the Predators. So I'm definitely regretting that early trade for Innkeeper in hindsight. Now I can play Spirits. And I don't think I'm attacking with Faceless Haven, am I? But I can start attacking with my Cat Tokens. Send in the cats. Alright, opponent jumps with Innkeeper. Maybe to put more cards in Graveyard. Could have also used Faceless Haven to block. It's gonna be a dispute. To draw into and make a treasure instead. And yeah, I think we gotta flicker 
Spellbinder here. Have another look. And take this Crankle. Okay. So our opponents gonna struggle to deploy their more expensive cards now. And we still have our teleportation circle providing a ton of value. But yeah, the Predator is a good blocker. So it's gonna be a while before we can actually break free here. Although now with the backup chariots we can trade off the first one. So how about we crew with the sculptors? I didn't think I send a spirit just yet. Alternatively, could have crewed with, let's say, a spirit of the Elder Guard, and then also tacked with Faceless Haven, and then can still cast Chariot by untapping my lands with Sculptor. And we'll flick our chariot again. Well, opponent is running out of creatures to sacrifice at least. So we've got that going for us. The painter's a good one. Give some additional sacrifice fodder. Is it time for Inferno? It is. Comes out as a 10 10. Yeah, that's gonna kill us pretty quickly. Swings in with the Inferno. I think I take it for now. Although I might not get the chance to chum block next turn with the Spellbinder. Points at 18, they've got three blockers, so let's say they block, block, block. Then seven. I think they're still dead. So I think I can take it here. Portable hole can remove an extra blocker. And then can animate Faceless Haven. Crew the chariots. I guess we'll use the spirits. And send in a team. And yeah, even if they block two of our largest creatures, they should still be taking a lethal here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn 2 Sculptor sets up turn 3 Chariot. Opponent with a Snow-Covered Forest into a Lair of the Hydra and an Innkeeper. 
So I could portable hold the innkeeper, but that doesn't slow down their mana acceleration. Um, so I think I'd rather develop my own sculpture here. I guess we could technically exile their treasure token with the portable hole. Can probably find a better use for it. Their opponent's also green white. And a ranger class, excellent target for a portable hole. Opponent's gonna level up their ranger class. Also have Skyclave Apparition we can play here. So we've got some options. For now, I think I still like playing Chariots since it prevents the opponent from attacking. And they won't really be able to leverage the level 2 Ranger class all that much. And then next turn, we can maybe get rid of it. And we maybe get to run away with this Chariot as well. Toski, that's a good one. Can still exile it with Apparition, luckily. Spellbinder could have a look. So we have a million options here. Five mana total. The most efficient play would be Portable Hole plus Spirit of the Elder Guard. And we can probably manage Toski and play for a turn. So... Yeah, I think we go for it. And then... Probably can afford to get Haven since Sculpture makes it so we have triple white. Exile Ranger class. And pass it back. Don't feel like crewing the chariots. Another innkeeper. And a Valkyrie. Okay. So the life gain angle is going to start adding up, but with Apparition we can answer the Valkyrie. So as the dust settles... I think we're going to be in fine shape. So I can Spellbinder to see what's up. Another Ranger class, okay. Then could attack with Spirit of the Elder Guard, although maybe they get to draw with Toski in that case. Could crew the Chariot with Spirit, attack with Chariot, make an extra cat on defense, and I'm fine if they trade their two creatures for Chariot. Yeah, this may be okay. And that happens. And then Apparition for the Ranger class should seal the deal here. All right, another Valkyrie. Luckily they couldn't cast the Ranger class because of the extra mana tax from Spellbinder, otherwise they could have gotten to 27 to pump the team right away. Spellbinder, just a 3-1 flyer here. Well, I mean, we can reduce the opponent's life total to the point where Valkyrie's not that threatening anymore. Although I also don't mind just using the Apparition to exile it and then set up a massive attack here. And then I can still add a Spellbinder to the board.
which is probably fine. Can't forget about Lair of the Hydra. Okay, so... These all attack. Opponents at nine. All right, GG's. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice hand, Innkeeper into turn three, Chariot, and then hope to pick up Teleportation Circle. Portable Hole could also come in handy. Yeah, I think we go for Innkeeper, because Sculptor, of course, doesn't waste our treasure, but it also doesn't guarantee that we get to play Chariot next turn if the opponent removes our Sculptor. Whereas our token should be safe. Opponents appears to be mono black, with an acquisitions expert. Yeah, I don't think I care enough about portable hole to exile the expert. I would rather have a backup chariot in case something bad happens to it. And then we're pretty likely to be able to attack next turn with a chariot and make an extra token. Alright, opponent is red black. Kills one cat token. And a Valky gonna take away my sculpture of winter. So now the only way to crew the original chariot is to play the backup. But then we can keep the original to the legendary rule. Ooh, teleportation circle, never mind. Think there's a change of plans, or is there... Yeah, if they have another expert, not playing the circle is quite punishing, even though playing chariot now lets me attack and make an extra token. And then I don't particularly care about attacking with my... 2-2 cat for now. Well, this is pretty much the dream start. Turn 3, chariots with an innkeeper in play. And then turn 4, teleportation circle. Start making more cat tokens. Right, opponent turns Valky into a Sculptor, which can untap their land, thanks to the Snow Mana base. Untaps Haven, so three mana remains for a Skullport Merchant. Well, we can freely attack with our Sika's Chariot, even crewing it with Faceless Haven. That way our tokens can attack as well. Opponent can double block one of them. Opponent's gonna jump instead. And a Frostbite to finish off Chariot. Alright. So wouldn't be able to flicker Chariot now, can still flicker Innkeeper. Well, if they have a discard spell for my Chariot in hand, we could be in a bit of trouble. And a check for traps will do exactly that. Well, we still have a lot of good top decks with the Teleportation Circle in play, of course, and our opponent's down to two cards in hand, and Professor is quite good here. What do we want to learn for first? Don't mind the Conjuration to try and find more creatures. Yeah. Okay, maybe find a Spirit of the Elder Guard, Skyclave, or another Professor. We'll go with the Skyclave. And swing in with the team. 
And end of turn, probably Flicker Professor. And deadly dispute to draw to make a treasure. And we'll flicker Professor. And our opponent packs it in. Just too far behind and the red black is not gonna have many answers for enchantments. So this teleportation circle is gonna run away with the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an excellent hand. Could even maybe combo with a portable hole with apparition in the sense that we can exile the opponent's tokens with portable hole that we leave behind with apparition. So that's kind of a slow way to eventually exile everything the opponent has. And we even picked up chariot in the meantime, so we really have the dream start of innkeeper into chariot into teleportation circle. And even a turn one portable hole for interaction. So it doesn't get much better than this. Opponent on a red-black sacrifice deck. Yeah, as tempting as it is to have a look with Spellbinder, we should just get the Chariot down. I guess we're still missing a fourth land. So we might not be guaranteed Circle next turn, but then we can just Spellbinder instead. Gelatinous Cube. Okay. Takes care of my cat token. That one they won't have to dissolve. Picked up land, but it's tapped. So don't particularly care to trade my chariot here. So we'll just spellbinder. Could also apparition. In which case I can attack with chariot, maybe that's better. As we'll get to make an extra token in the process. So now we're pretty far ahead on board. Sweeper could be bad, but Circle plus Chariot is a nice way to recover from a Sweeper. Opponent passes. Could even go second Innkeeper into Teleportation Circle. Might be overextending a little bit. Don't want to animate the Chariot this turn since it could get hit by instant speed removal. Could also check out if the coast is clear with a Spellbinder, I suppose. And then wait on Circle. Although a Spellbinder does kind of overextend into Sweeper more than Circle does. So I think the conclusion is we just attack with the team, play Circle. And Flicker Chariot. Opponent does nothing. Six mana for Orcus, Prince of Undeath. Okay. Well, that's a sweeper that uh, is quite one sided here. Opponent's left with a 4 4 token, but we can recover. So let's have a look with the Spellbinder before we do anything else. Kalein and Dispute. Doesn't matter all that much. Professor has a couple options here. Don't mind either Conjuration or maybe Reduced to Memory. Uh, let's go with Conjuration. And then no crewing of the Chariot this turn. We'll just flicker it and make two more cats. Mm. 
Bangkok Chariot means we can maybe trade away the first one. So I can Innkeeper. We'll crew with Professor and a cat. And Spellbinder can get in there too. There's an argument for still just attacking with my cat since they're likely just putting the 4 4 token in front of Chariot and maybe trading Orcus with Spellbinder. But I think we'll be just fine. Bank of Chariots, two more cats, and then end of turn flicker it with circle for seven cats total. Maybe I should just flicker the professor at this point since we have enough cats where opponents pretty much needs another sweeper. Maybe just go for sciences to hit my land drop. Right, another Orcus does the same as last time. Well, we have a lot of life to work with. Opponent still have three life, so don't mind my position. Despite all the blowout Princes of Undeath, we're still looking good. Gas can take out Innkeeper. Can't forget about the opponent's creature lines here, Hive and Den of the Bugbear. Orcus attacks. So yeah, turning chariots into a creature is quite risky if her opponent has removal. Uh, and if they can, let's see, can they animate both lands? They should only be able to turn one into a creature. So if I exile the eye twitch, they shouldn't be able to trade for the chariot. But again, if their last card is some sort of interactive instant, we're going to regret it. So I think the play is just going to be apparition, exile, eye twitch. And then I don't even have to attack with my token since the creature lands could block and we would only get in for two damage. So I'm probably better off just uh, flickering my chariot once again. And then next turn attack with the team. Just play it safe. My opponent did have a frostbite, so we would have gotten punished for accruing. They get a 1 1 token in return. At 32 life, we can take a few hits from Orcus. Another eye twitch. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Her hand is. Missing double white and green, but we do have circle and chariot. So I think I gotta keep. Have a castable spellbinder. Any land gets a circle. 
which can flicker Spellbinder too. Alright, double circle. We're gonna have some fun if we can get to that point. Magda is scary. Alright, so a Naya color deck. Take the opponent's Spellbinder. So Naya Dragons, one can presume. I'm fine trading for Magda since the Sentinel combo means they can generate a lot of treasure with it. And the Sentinel would just block the Spellbinder anyway. Just put a 3 1 in play here. And then the opponent can cast their Spellbinder, probably takes Chariot. And then we have to decide between Apparition and Circle. Professor can get the uh, Environmental Sciences, because I do want to get to 6 mana for my Chariot as soon as possible. Grab a Forest. Alright, so one land away from Chariot. Circle plus Professor is also pretty nice. Ooh, Vorinclex. Yeah, that's gonna hit us pretty hard. So... Tempted to take it. In the hopes of having more power and toughness in play to trade for Vorinclex next turn. Although then again, if we can cast Chariot, I can trade away Professor and the two tokens for Vorinclex. And then trading Spellbinders here is fine. And if I don't draw land, what happens? Then I could activate Faceless Haven, although that's kind of a last resort. Could Teleportation Circle to Flicker Professor. Yeah, it's not going to be ideal, so drawing an untapped land here is going to be pretty key. But I'll take the trade. Alright, we got there. So I'll happily trade my board for Vorinclex to then take over with Teleportation Circle. Magda's fine. Vorinclex attacks. We'll trade our board. Does mean losing Professor, which is another nice flicker target, but Chariot's good enough. And another Sentinel. Alright, so all they have going for them is Magda to eventually make 5 treasure, but we'll be able to answer that with Skyclave Apparition next turn, just want to get the circle going first. Back up Professor. Can get a reduced to memory as an extra removal spell in case they top deck a dragon. Seems prudent. Alright, well, we'll see if the opponent can draw their way out of this. I'm looking forward to getting two copies of Teleportation Circle in play. Back up Chariots, and yeah, opponent packs it in, they're just too far behind, they know the contents of our hand. Sweet. So yeah, this green-white Teleportation Circle deck is quite a lot of fun, and it can also be quite competitive, I think. The main weakness, if I had to point one out, of the deck is big flying creatures, especially creatures above 
for mana that we won't be able to exile with Skyclave Apparition. So a blue-red dragon deck with Goldspan Dragon and counter spells is going to be hard to beat since we're trying to resolve four mana cards, which line up poorly against some of the cheaper counter spells. So that's going to be kind of a tough matchup. Maybe a deck that can go very wide with tokens, even wider than Hesika's Chariot plus Teleportation Circle, I guess could be problematic. But overall, this deck seems quite fun and uh, quite competitive as well. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.